I can remember when Microsoft and CDARS. I can remember when Microsoft and CDARS. Features that really simple. Features that really simplify. What's wrong? With you? What's going on, guys? I am back. Another day, another video. So let me ask you something. Have you ever asked yourself the question, how can I become a programmer? Me personally, when I was coming up, I never asked myself that question. Programming and or development was not even a blip on my radar. If you've watched any of my videos, or at least this one right here, you'll know that at the age of 13, my goal was to become an NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years since then, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I am making YouTube videos and I am not an NBA player. However, life is still great. It truly is. Um, I don't have any regrets. You know, it would have been nice, but it's still great. Interestingly enough, since I didn't grow up wanting to be a programmer necessarily, I didn't have a plan to prepare myself for it. I just kind of stumbled into the field. And while that's not the most ideal way to find a career, I think that my road travel can help you. And that's presuming that you also want to be a programmer. So now I know you're asking, how can my road travel? Well, I guess technically you're probably saying, how can your road travel help me as a programmer? Well, since you asked me, my road travel can help you avoid the useless pit stops on your road to becoming an A1 programmer. And yes, A1 is a term I made up. For whatever reason, it sounds elite to me. It's kind of like A1 steak sauce. Like it just sounds official. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm going with that. You know, when you're going after something, it's useful in knowing what to do, what steps to take. I would also say that equally beneficial is knowing what not to do. Today, we're going to mix in a little bit of both, what to do and what not to do. So I would say that the first thing is to identify the type of programming that seems interesting. Think about the type of programming you could see yourself doing. I would say that this is critical because there are a vast number of areas that you can find yourself getting into. Areas such as iOS development, macOS development, Android development, web development. Quite frankly, there's just a lot to develop and that can be overwhelming. As I stated before, I didn't really plan to become a programmer. What I did know was that I like computers and my father, he used to work at a store called Micro Center and I would occasionally go to work with him. During those times, I'd spend most of my time running around playing computer games. Truth be told, I wasn't really running around that store. It was more like a, a brisk skip, so to speak. I mean, I was like eight or something, so yeah. I was skipping around the store. Now, did I think to myself, yeah, would it be cool to make this game? No, I did not think that to myself because again, I wasn't trying to program. I was just running around that store. However, what did pique my interest was what a computer was capable of doing and what it was capable of outputting. It wasn't until my sophomore year in high school that I took an HTML class. And from that point on, while I was eagerly and naively prepping for pro basketball, <laughs> I found another interest along the way. So as you can see, I kind of ran into my interest later on, which I think it cost me a little bit because I wasn't able to cultivate and develop my skills from an early age. I believe it was Malcolm Gladwell's with the outliers that talks about the 10,000 hour rule, which basically says that, you know, the most accomplished individuals in their field have spent about 10,000 hours developing and cultivating their skills before they're 20. Now, while this may not be the cookie cutter process for mastering your field, it's undeniable that the earlier you invest time into your field, the faster your skills will develop. That said, missing out on those early development years for me, it kind of forced me to play catch up in a sense. And I don't want you to miss out on that. I want you to be able to get on it early. So again, the first thing that you want to do is research a type of programming or development that finds your interest so you can jump right in. Once you find the development area that piques your interest, you need to find a language that's suitable for that area. And this can kind of take you down a rabbit hole because it seems like at this point they're developing a new language like every year. Because there are so many languages, I would recommend looking at languages that employers hire for and or languages that are brand new or on the cusp. Now I'd imagine that it's pretty obvious as to why you'd want to look at language that employers hire for because you'd probably like to get a job. However, another reason that may not be so obvious has to do with language support. In my experience, languages that are widely used in the workplace are also heavily supported by the creators of that language. And that makes sense. People who create languages understand that if their language is widely used in the workplace, it needs to be consistently monitored and issue free. Their goal is to maintain and add as many clients as possible. So they're gonna make sure that their language is top notch as well as provide solid documentation for that language. So just to recap, we've covered two items so far. Number one, think and research the type of language you can see yourself doing because the earlier that you start investing in that language, the more it'll pay off later on. 
Number two, after you identify the programming area of interest, find a language suitable for that language because you don't want to pick a language that you can't get a job in. Because at the end of the day, you know, being a programmer is cool, but if you're kind of like a homeless programmer, then you don't want to be that person either, I would say. Just my opinion. After you've done that, um, I'd imagine you'd probably be pretty tired. So I would recommend like taking a nap or, or something like that. But after you get your rest and wake up, the next thing you'll want to do is try to figure out how you're going to cultivate the skills to become the programmer you want to be with the language that you choose. My first real experience in honing my skills came in college. And again, I think that's too late. There are tons of resources that you can access that will jumpstart your programming education. And I'm always a fan personally of online sites. I particularly use the paid ones such as Udemy and Pluralsight. I've had really good experience with these sites because they offer a variety of options. And personally, I think Udemy is the strongest for me at this point because of the amount of material they provide. Also, they have like these random sales where normally a $30 course will be like $10. And for the amount of material you get in this course, $10 is gonna be a steal. One of the reasons that I'm a huge proponent of online courses is that they allow you to go at your own speed. You can go as fast or as slow as you need to. Also, there are a vast array of teachers to present the material. I purchased online courses that were good, but the presenter's style wasn't quite as effective as I like. While other presenters make the learning process fly by, thus making the information easier to process. You could also go the route of code boot camps. Now, personally, I've never attended a boot camp, but I have met people who have, and it seems to be really effective. So I've met individuals who were teachers, decided that they wanted to change fields, they signed up for a code boot camp, and within three to four months, they were actually able to get a solid gig. From what I gather, code boot camps are effective because of the amount of intensity and focus with which they're teaching you the language that you're trying to learn. You essentially have professionals teaching you the ins and outs of a particular language. Any question that you have can be answered directly. And quite frankly, you're just learning a boatload of information in a short amount of time. I've looked around and it seems like code boot camps can be a little pricey, but given the amount of material that you're learning, I think it's well worth it. My last recommendation will be to simply read as much as you can about the language that you choose and the programming area you desire to be in. You want to stay up to date as much as possible. Languages, for example, like C Sharp are constantly updated and with each new release, there's going to be new features that you can take advantage of. Features that simplify previous operations and or tasks. I can remember when Microsoft came out with C Sharp 6 and they came out with string interpolation. Now prior to that, everyone, well at least everyone I knew, was using string.format. Once I learned about string interpolation, I never looked back. It made the code so much cleaner, so much more readable, especially when you want to use expressions inside of a string. You don't want to be that developer who's still using old or deprecated methods to get something done when there's a new feature available that makes it far more efficient to use. Because in the end overall, that will affect your speed and the potential of you getting hired by future employers. Employers appreciate devs who are involved with their field outside of work, even if that's just limited to staying up to date or aware of information regarding your field. I mean, it's really beneficial if you can identify a new feature that can enhance a current business process. Just constant general awareness can go a long way. So I hope that you guys were able to get a better understanding of what it may take to get in the programming field. And again, this is just my experience, my personal opinion, my perspective. I'm sure that there are other routes that you can take, but at any rate, please continue to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell icon, all that jazz, and I will see you guys on next time.